Welcome back, Shalligators. <laughs> well, the news that we never thought we'd hear, and yet, if we're being honest, definitely thought we would hear, has broken. Cardi B is back with Offset. She did a whole tell-all about it. And the TLDR is, I'm crazy and I like dick. And I'm like, Jesus, that should be my LinkedIn bio. I get it. Like, I totally get it. And we all get it. When we break up with someone, we just get it. We get what she's going through. Because the one thing she really boiled it down to was, I miss talking to my best friend. I just missed him, you know? She's like, I act up and I break up with people. And, and then the reality sets in and I'm like, oh, I miss you. So we're going to break it all down. If you're going through something similar, if you've broken up with someone who is probably pretty toxic for you, but you're like, but I miss you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how to sort out what is your fear brain, what is reality, and what you can do to move on in a healthy way. Oh, and do you guys like my new background? I finally got another room in my house done. It's like very slow decorating the house because there's nowhere to shop here and delivery takes forever. I feel like something else needs to be here. I feel like this is too small. I don't, I don't know. What, what should I do here? Pictures of Justin Bieber and Shawn Mendes? say no more. Also find me on Cameo if you would like a video shout out for a friend or yourself, a pep talk, get a romantic question answered, anything like that. I'll should be <laughs> also be sure to find me on Infstream. We're going to be doing some of Evil Week over there this year. I cannot wait. So let's talk Cardi. I get it. I, we all get it. We're, and it really like tugged my heartstrings when she's like, I miss talking to my best friend. I mean... Fuck, you know, I also got it when she's like, I need dick. I was like, I told, yes, yes, it's easy to leave a guy when the sex is bad. I mean, as Blanche Dever said, you th sleep with him two or three more times just to be sure. And then you cut him loose. But when the sex is good, I mean, what do you do? How do you move on? This is what we need to accept. It's gonna suck. This is like what, what we don't, it's like we acknowledge it on paper like, we know it intellectually, but then when we experience it, we're like, oh, no, no, no. Here's an example. You're going on a diet, right? I'm on keto right now, so all I think about is carbohydrates. It's, I might as well say carbohydrates during sex with my boyfriend. He, he'd probably get it. He'd understand. If I was just like, croissants, he'd be like, all right, fine. When I stopped eating carbs and went keto, I missed them. I missed them something powerful. But that doesn't mean they're good for me. If you were if you were talking to me and I was like, well, no, I need to I need to go to Cheesecake Factory and order the chocolate chip cookie dough cheesecake. You'd be like, Shallon, why? All you do is bitch about your weight. Oh, come on. Why do you need to do that? And I'd be like, well, because I'm I miss it. So that tells me I should be eating it. You'd be like, there is nothing less logical than that. Like, okay, just because you miss it doesn't mean you should have it. If anything, you missing it shows it had this unnatural hold over you. Same with like drugs or alcohol. You go into a rehab, you ask anybody there, do you, I don't know, miss cocaine? They're going to be like, yes, I do. And would you ever give the, them the advice like, oh, well, I mean, you should just probably go do it. Well, you miss it. So what could be the problem? No. You acknowledge that just that feeling is not enough to create a healthy situation. We acknowledge that that's true about diet, about drugs, about alcohol, about a million different things. But when it comes to love, we cannot abide that feeling. Well, I, I miss him. So that means it's no, 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 no. It doesn't mean anything. It just means he was a part of your life and now he's gone. And that, what you're experiencing, is grief. It's grief. And who the fuck enjoys grief? It's awful. Whether that's my grandmother died, my guinea pig passed away, my fuckboy finally stopped texting me and I had to read the writing on the wall about it. It's going to hurt. But again, this is not indicative of a healthy situation. In fact, what I've learned is the more something hurts, the more it had no place in my life to begin with. Wait, what? What? Shallon, that can't be right. No, that can't be right. Because we need to judge a person's value in our life by the pain we feel when they're out of it, right? Mm -mm. No. Let's go back to the drug and the food examples, right? You start doing the keto diet and you get something the first few days, it's called the keto flu. You just feel like Ugh, bad. It's because your body is burning off all that crappy sugar that you've been stuffing yourself with for the last three years. 
and it's burning it off. You're basically going through a withdrawal. Same with drugs and alcohol. Everyone knows that. You check someone into rehab, they go through the shakes and the, and the hallucinations. They're withdrawing from someone or from something. The same is true with people. When I have lost a fuckboy, a hurt locker, and if you're new here and you don't know what a hurt locker is, a hurt locker is the name we give to guys who we like imprint on during a time in our life where we're not feeling great, where we need an emotional getaway car. He's going to save us from something and we just like latch on to them. And very often it's not someone we want to date, it's someone we want to be. Oh, it's someone we kind of admire. Maybe it's their social status. We want to date the popular guy. He's the hurt locker, the smart guy, the rich guy. He's independent. He doesn't need to report to a boss. So when I separate from a fuck boy, a hurt locker, something like that, the pain, oh, I feel absolutely hollowed out inside. I can't breathe. It's like their name is just a chant in my in my brain. Like every breath is their name. And I have learned the hardest of hard ways, as I have to learn everything, to lean into that. Because underneath that mania is a lesson. I recently, as I've talked about, I talked about on Instream about my first Montana breakup, that there was this guy who was in danger of becoming a major, major hurt locker for me. Like when we broke up, I was... I mean, I was absolutely annihilated. I was just demented with sadness. And I forced myself to peel back the layers like a croissant. I want a croissant so badly. Peel back the layers of those feelings and look at what was driving it. And in the video, I said what was driving it was I didn't just love or like. I mean, it felt like love. It was manic like love. Well, like bad love, not like good love. Good love feels like a nourishing salad. Bad love feels like 10 packets of Skittles from a gas station. I peeled it back. I'm like, that wasn't, it wasn't that I wanted him. He was a gateway into a social world that I, being new in town in a state where I didn't know anyone when I moved here, a totally different environment than I'm used to, totally different fashion, totally different foods, totally different things that make people popular and cool. It's like, oh, you got to eight point buck. I was like, well, I have a blue check mark on Instagram. Oh my God, I'm such a loser. I am a fish out of water in a big way. He was this was the gateway into this whole world. I loved his sisters. I loved his friends. Like I loved everything that we did together. So losing him wasn't losing him. It was losing the whole world. When I look at it realistically, when I think about him, I, I cannot tell you one positive quality about him. I can't. He was tall he was, he was tall and he was hot and everyone girls looked at him they're like oh he looked like a hemsworth but he i mean that's it just height baby i, I still like i still even in the depths of my misery and my mania like pulled over by the side of the road crying in a field i couldn't if i was being honest with myself tell you what the deal was it was about what he represented. And again, when we have people who represent something, the bigger the thing they represent, the more we need what they represent, whether it's social status, financial escape, escape out of our small town, just simply stimulation, the bigger that pain is going to be. The harder they come, the harder they fall. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. I don't know. I've never understood that phrase. I always sound sort of weirdly sexual and the harder they come, the harder they fall. Oh, like, like people who talk a big game, they're going to have the biggest fall. I don't know. Anyway, so what does this have to do with Cardi and Offset, right? I think, I think Cardi can obviously name positive qualities about Offset. She might be the fucking only one at this point, but you know, whatever. So I don't think he's just what he represents. Like he was her husband. Like he was truly the love of her life. He was the guy she thought had her back, put her above everyone else. And there were a lot of everyone's. That motherfucker could just, my friend Eliza said it right. She's like, you know, what pisses me off? All Cardi talks about is fucking and Offset's still like, nah, it's not enough. Like, that girl gets down. It had his baby, like wrote or died for him. And he's still like, but maybe I can fuck every groupie out there. And I feel like Cardi has intimated at some point that, you know, she was 
willing to sort of like accept that behavior as long as she was number one, you know, that she was first among many. And I know that that's a mindset that a lot of women have, even if we don't like talk about it at parties, it's not in our Instagram bio, but like based on what our behaviors are, based on what we permit and therefore promote, yeah, maybe we do feel like that. And you know what? I'm going to cry saying this. I felt like that with my ex, the one I was just talking about. Like, it's like the Ariana Grande song. Like, I heard, like, a little love is better than none from just a little piece of my heart. You know Harry Styles wrote that song, right? Isn't that crazy? It's such a good song. I wish, I want to hear him sing it. Um, You just, when you're so wrapped up in someone, you're like, I don't care. A little is better than none. As long, and especially if you love me the most, okay, I'll take it. I will help you commit this crime. I will be your co-conspirator. Oh, you want to lie to me about where you've been? <laughs> hey, let me help you by believing you. Ah, doesn't matter. These stories don't make any sense, any sense at all. I am going to meet you halfway on this because I am quite desperate. And isn't that how it feels? I'm getting off. If you're here watching this video, it's because you are in some fucking pain, pain over an ex. And like I said, I've been there and it just, it blocks out the sun. Like nothing else matters. There's this fallout boy line. I feel like I'm talking about music a lot. Like my smile is an open wound without you. And I just, I think about it all the time because it's so true. When you're in this pain, you're just like, uh-huh. Like you're listening to people and you're just like, uh-huh. Yeah. And it's just this constant slideshow of memories about someone that's happening behind your eyes and you're just like, let me go home so I can at least be sad and think about him in the privacy of my own den, of my own den of shame. So how, how do you get out of this? This is what Cardi should have done. She should have just went through the withdrawals. I mean, she she filed for divorce a month ago, right? This time was always going to suck. This was going to be a shit time no matter what what the world is talking about it. You're looking at the reality of what a divorce is. It's all fun and games. Like, I'm done with him and walk out the door. Well, honey, that's not what happens when you dissolve a marriage. It's we're separating our 401ks and the property and who gets the lawnmower. And I want this wagon wheel coffee table from the Roy Rogers garage sale of crap. What movie is that from? Anyway, there's a lot. You don't just walk away. Plus, they have a child. So the reality of, oh my God, I'm not just separating from, I'm not just walking out. I am separating finances, property, projects that we're working on, friends, managers maybe. I mean, the list is just endless and it feels so overwhelming. You're like, I'm about to split myself in two. I'm about to split myself in two. And even if you're not Cardi, any breakup feels like that. Because so much of the time, we, when we're in a relationship or a situationship, mostly when it is a situationship, we don't live in reality in a way. We live in fantasy. We live in possibility. It's not the person, it's the possibilities. The guy I was broken up about, like I said, could name one positive quality. If I had ever had to go on a road trip with him, I would have put a bullet in my head. But the fantasy was oh my God, I like cut the line in terms of making friends in this town. I was just like slotted in right to the top of this social structure. I have this built-in group of friends. I have this built-in fun whole lifestyle. I got away with something. You cannot take that away from me, right? And when that looked like it was being taken away, it was terrifying and gutting to me, terrifying and gutting. Really? Really? You're probably thinking, I hope that you are, like, Shallon, he's, you've made friends before this guy in your life, so what? Why do you think you couldn't make friends w after, without him? And you know what? The no shit, no shit, Shallon. Like, all the things I was afraid of, number one, came to pass. Like, I don't talk to those people anymore. Which is like, again, it's fine. Like, I get this perspective. I'm like, I actually didn't. I mean, they were they were fine. It was fine. But I have a way better group of friends now that I made myself that's not 
contingent on a guy where if he goes away, he pulls this Jenga piece out of my entire life and it collapses. Like I feel so much better and healthier because my friends belong to me. My social groups belong to me now. They're not, I don't have to keep fucking someone to still have friends. Do you know what I mean? So how does this relate to Cardi? She should have, I just wish she had like, there should be like divorce concierges, like divorce consultants. You know, like that movie Get Hard with like Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart where he's like a prison consultant or like pretends to be? Like a divorce consultant who's like, hey, this week X, Y, and Z is going to happen that's bad, but A, B, C, D, E, and F is going to happen that's amazing. You're going to get this freedom. You're going to meet this new guy probably because we're going to take you out and you're going to feel free. Like people need almost like this spirit guide working through pain because when you're in it, it's like being in a storm. You don't know where it is and where it isn't. But someone in a plane or looking at a satellite, well, they can tell you exactly where the storm ends and begins. Like, no, it'll be through in four hours. You'll be fine. But we need someone with that perspective to say, you are going to be fine. Let me be that person. You're going to be fine. If, if you choose to use this time to peel back those delicious flaky buttery croissants with just a little Nutella on the inside, just the flaky layers, the flaky layers. When you peel back the flaky layers of your own pain, when the crumbs are at the bottom of the bag, you will begin to heal because time heals nothing. Time heals nothing. It's what you do with the time that matters. So you can spend this time in your cave of shame and misery. I did for a long time over this dude until I was like, get your head out of the sand and start to peel back those delicious flaky layers. Just perfect crystal of sugar on the top. And then once I realized what was driving these feelings, monsters live in the dark, right? And when we shine a light on things and we speak them out loud, they sound so stupid, so incredibly stupid. And I'm not saying this to make you feel stupid. You should never feel stupid, but you should look at, at these fear-based things that your brain is telling you and be like, <laughs> okay. The way you probably, hopefully, looked at me when I was like, I didn't think I would ever make a friend again if I wasn't dating this dude. You'd be like, that's literally not true. That's so stupid for you to think. And I forced myself to get the perspective so that I could be like, yeah, that's really stupid. That's like super stupid right so how can you do this when you're in the triage situation when you're in it when you're in the storm honey ask people do you think your friends have not been stewing on this very topic for like literally weeks because by the time you're done with a guy your relationship goes south your friends have seen it coming for i mean miles away and they've just been like waiting and praying and waiting for this day and they want to be like sensitive to how you're feeling but they're so fucking happy you're out of this so ask them be like sit them down and be like here's what my fear brain is telling me um i'm gonna be a virgin forever because i'm not dating patrick anymore uh everyone is going to know that i am a virgin and think that i'm a loser who couldn't close with the guy and like that's why he didn't like me because there's something gross and deficient about my body speak it out Throw light on those monsters. Put some truth to it. Truth. Because it's not truth. And your friends are going to look at you and they're going to be like, this is what you're telling yourself? Jesus Christ, Hannah. You sound insane. Let that guide you. Let that guide you. You're not going to feel it. All you're going to feel is the grief. All you're going to feel is the grief. And the good thing about losing a boyfriend is that it isn't death. Because you're supposed to grieve when someone dies and you're, the way you feel is not stupid and people shouldn't tell you that you're insane for like mourning your grandfather. But they should give you just that little eyedropper full of, here's a reality check, when you're mourning a fuck boy. Because that truth, that truthiness, truly is the anti-venom to all of that pain. It's all, it's all the anti-venom. And here's the upside. If you guys are meant to get back together, because I mean, it does happen. You moving into this space of, I now understand more about why I miss you. I understand more about my feelings. I understand what you brought into my life, or I assumed you would bring into my life, but actually you didn't. That attitude of whateverishness, of I don't need you, of why men love bitches behavior, that is magnetic. 
If you want him back, it is crucial, crucial you move into that space emotionally. Crucial. Because what you have right now with a broken heart is a lack of power, right? Very few of us have a broken heart and still feel like we have the upper hand in the power. I mean, sometimes that is when we've been cheated on and he wants us back. I've been cheated on a bunch and girl, nothing about that felt powerful. You just feel like such, you feel like such a fool. You know, you guys have probably been there. And so it's not even like that scenario. If, if any scenario would give you ostensibly power, it would be that one. And that still doesn't do it. So the thing that does is getting clarity about why you feel so, so, so strongly. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Some of it is true. Some of what your fear brain is telling you is true. You're not going to have anyone to go to the pumpkin patch with. You know what? You might not. You might not. That outfit you bought, for the pumpkin patch with the floppy hat and like the cardigan with the stripes, you might not get that Insta picture that you were imagining in your mind, holding it and like the leaves are blowing. You're like, ah, and it's like the perfect preset and your boyfriend's on. You're like, ah, and there's like a French bulldog somehow in the background. That might not happen. But think about it. Remember we were saying the person or the possibilities? Maybe that kind of falls under the possibilities category. Maybe you just wanted that photo and the guy in it was like eh, okay maybe there should be a guy maybe not but maybe you did want a guy in it why why was it i want to post it because i want my ex to be jealous a different guy i want to look cool like i'm doing something with my life i really want to become an influencer and i feel like this photo is going to be crucial notice how none of those things has to do with the dude that you're currently mourning right Again, you get down deep in those flaky, delicious layers. So delicious. You're going to continue to discover person versus possibilities. But like I said, there's going to be some things you genuinely miss about someone. Genuinely miss. <sighs> I know. But I bet it's not as many things as you think. When Max and I broke up, it was fucking awful. It was unbearable. I mean, we broke up several times because several waves of information just kept coming to my attention. One of the things that I was going to miss the most was talking to him about my career, about this job. Because very few people, I have people in my life who know about social media and, you know, this job. And I have people in my life who know me and know my heart inside and out. He was the only one who knew both. And so I felt like I was losing not just my partner, like my life partner, but kind of my manager. I mean, I have a manager, sorry, Jerry, but like someone who was there guiding me, like my mentor, the Jay-Z to my Beyonce. And it was so wrenching. And I kept using that as an excuse to stay in the situation. And my friends were just like tearing their hair out. They're like, do you not know you can outsource this information? You can hire people. You can hire people to do this. And I was like, no, I can't. Because there was something that felt so gross about hiring what a boyfriend had done. It's like, it, it felt like hiring a prostitute. Cause I was like, I'm not, what, what's next? I get an escort? Like, am I just gonna pay for everything that my boyfriend gave me? You know, it felt like that. And looking back, that was so silly because what my friends were telling me was actually the absolutely healthiest thing to do in the entire world. Figure out what you miss, find a way to get it in a healthier way. And in this context, it happened to be Hire someone, fucking pay them to fill the void. But for most of us, it's not going to be that. It's, I want to go to the pumpkin patch. I want to do all these couple things. And now I can't do them. Do you have friends? Do you have single friends? Guess what? They want to do them too. All single girls do, right? They want to go to the pumpkin patch and those stupid cardigans. I bought a whole specific cardigan for the pumpkin patch. I feel like an idiot. And I have a boyfriend. I still feel like an idiot. So... Write down what you, what your mind keeps going to in terms of you losing and look at it as neutrally as humanly possible and figure out a way to get those things in your life in a healthy way, whether it's I'm paying for it on Upwork, like I'm simply outsourcing whatever it is I think this guy brought into my life, 
Whether it's, hey, I'm emailing this list to 15 of my girlfriends. I was like, who the fuck is coming to the pumpkin patch with me, bitch? One of y'all is. I got the card again. Figure out how you can replicate what this guy was giving you in as many ways as humanly possible. And you know what I bet? After that, this giant throbbing planet-sized ball of grief that you've been rolling around in your mind is going to funnel down. You're going to one by one tick these things off. Person possibility. Well, I can go to the pumpkin patch of this person. I can outsource that. I can do that. Can't get, okay, I can't, get, I can't get laid by my friends. So if that's what I miss, wait a minute. <laughs> now this ball is so much smaller and it's so much more manageable. And it seems silly that I'd be like, I can't handle this. It's so dealable. But you're not going to know what's outsourceable, what you can take off your list until you really look at it. Like I said, monsters live in the dark. Make a list, shine a light on those layers and what's underneath them, Nutella, and then come back to yourself and be like, okay, I still have X, Y, and Z to grieve. That's a manageable amount of grief for me. I can do that. I'm allowed to be sad about those things because I know, I know, I know those are truly things that I'm going to mourn. There were truly things I mourned about Max that I grieved and I missed that I couldn't replicate, that I couldn't get from anyone else. But because I weeded out those other things, I was able to handle that grief and I was able to move on. But you know what? It did suck. So Allow it to suck. Don't tell yourself it's not going to suck. Don't tell yourself you're supposed to feel like top of the world, girls around the world. You're not. It's grief. It's grief. You're suffering a loss just like, just like death. And death isn't supposed to be fun. You're not supposed to be, like, you're over it. Oh my God, you are so over your cousin dying. You're like, oh my God, you're over it, Ebs. No one would say that to you. And don't say it to yourself. Give yourself the time and the space that you need. But don't think that missing someone means they need to be back in your life. Cardi. Don't make me come over there, Cardi. For more, click like and subscribe. We're going to be doing some videos coming up, breaking down, I know, a long last, it took us forever, Ella DeGeneres' apology and Jordan Woods' apology, how they both gave complete bullshit non-apologies and what we can learn from this and how to spot liars in our own life. Click like and subscribe. Find me on Cameo. I'll see you later, Shalligators. Bye.